Hi, I'm Shandy, the artist behind Shandy Finance. Today's video is my fifth painting of the Zodiac theme series. This is the Scorpio one. As usual, like all of the other paintings of the series, I am working with a watercolor wash first and topping it with oil pastels. Before we get onto the uh, today's video, I just wanted to tell you that all the other paintings of the series is linked below in the video description and I have the playlist linked above um, in the pop-up link so you can check them out as well if you haven't already and I really appreciate that so let's get on with today's surreal Scorpio painting I sketched out my figure with a graphite pencil and then I wetted the entire surface around the figure uh, especially the top part um, uh, around the figure and the rock on which the figure is sitting with water. And then I started off with painting uh, yellow at the very bottom area and then slowly trying to build up a gradient. So the idea is that the colors will go from yellow to orange to crimson and um, then to purple and blue and finally a little bit of black at the very edges and what I'm trying to build is kind of like a sunset gradient at the back and due to the normal nature of watercolors as I'm adding a paint the paint will drip downwards so I have to be careful where my paint is going so that it does not make a huge mess or more muddy colors so yes i want my background to be very very wet till i am done with the blending because if the background is wet or the paper is wet then it automatically helps in blending one color into another and it gives such interesting um, blend of colors in a watercolor painting that is kind of an advantage in watercolors but since i'm working upright you can see that the paint and the colors are automatically flowing downwards so i have to pay attention to how much pigment and water i'm putting so that they could don't go down quite a lot i don't want the black to at the very bottom uh, the purple in the middle is fine but i want to see some of the magentas and crimsons as well so I keep on adding color to adjust what color i want to see where and this is just the initial layer so i don't have to be perfect because i know that in this particular painting i'm going to go over everything with oil pastels so whatever is a little bit imperfect i can um, arrange it or per perfect it when in my oil pastel layers but still i want the gradient to be smooth and the colors to be more or less the right place and i'm also adding a lot of layers because a single layer generally doesn't do give give enough brightness in where i'm using a lot of water so if you want to use you have like really bright striking colors you need to use less water but since i want that nice blended look i'm using less water so i have to do multiple layers to get the brightness of colors but once again since i know that i'm going to top it up with oil pastels even if i don't get it as bright as i want my end result to be it's fine because i can get that brightness easily from the oil pastels so continuing on with the background and you see like I did on the right side I went from yellow to colors above um, in a gradient I did on the left and right more or less similarly and like I said it don't have to be perfect all the perfections can be done in the later layers by, with oil pastel just get a good starting point is what I'm trying to do once I've added all the blues and purples and violets I'll go and add some really dark blue black so what i'm doing is i'm mixing some black with my prussian blue at the very edges so that the edges are really dark and that gradient is even better now onto the rock um, after i painted the rock initially i realized that the rock area was really too big so later i ended up covering a part of the bottom area and not painting it completely because I didn't think that that was l that much of empty space was looking good so that was a compositional error initially but I fixed it in, uh, eventually so that's all good under the rock I'm doing the same thing as I did on my background I started off with a very light layer of uh, 
I think it was burnt sienna that I used with mixed with a little bit of yellow ochre and then I'm adding additional layers of different shades of brown rhombers and burnt sienna and all that stuff mixed with blues and a uh, little bit of black to get the darker layers and slowly building up the darks and lights and adjusting the color as per the requirement of the painting as some areas i want to show light so i'm keeping those areas light some areas i want to show it make it very dark so i'm adding a lot more paint in those areas and once again i like all other areas of the painting i will go over with oil pastels so it doesn't need to be perfect i just need a schematic of the lights and darks where the lights would be where the darks would be and eventually i can work it out for the very darks i've pulled in a lot of blues which kind of gives a greenish um shadow but that works because it's a rock and can have any damn color that i want it to be sorry about my language but it's just it's just a surreal painting it's not as realistic as more of most of my paintings um i'm adding a colors at, uh, with a little bit of my imagination than following a rock painting um or a rock picture rigorously so just to believe in my imagination and stay on with me till the end i i assure you it will work out all well um, although I love painting realistically sometimes just to add a little bit of colors and textures of my own uh, makes me feel good so I'm doing that I guess you're artist when you're artist you just learn the rules really nicely so that you're able to break them bravely like I said I'm adding some darks blues and blacks at the very edges but this bottom area of the painting I'll eventually not complete um, use all of this area we will cover that with a, a painter staple later and only use half of the um, area at the bottom underneath the car scorpion sting once um, this layer is completely light dry the watercolor layer is completely dry then I'll start with oil pastels but before that let's put a little bit of color in the body as well with watercolors and start with a base layer so I did a gray color in the hair and then added some details with dark blue black mixture so for the blue black I'm using Prussian blue and black and I will also use a little bit of browns here and there for the lighter areas just to build a nice gradient under the body I'm using a little bit of purple for the shadow areas but on the main body I'm using a mix of red and white and yellow and any red and white and yellow would work here because once again I'll come back with all pastels to perfect the colors and for the shadow areas I'm using a little bit of brown to that mix on to the scorpion body I'm using a mixture of red mix with a little bit of uh, burnt sienna to get a bright nice bright red and painting all those little blocks of the scorpion's body or they're called probably um segments i'm not sure what they are scientifically called but anyways i just blocked them all with colors and once this layer is done and i put in a little bit of shadows also with the watercolor then I'll move on to my oil pastels always remember if you're wanting to mix two mediums like if you want to put anything on top of watercolor whether it is um, color pencils or oil pastels or whatever what you want to do is let the initial layer dry completely before you start with the next uh, with the oil pastels now that my initial watercolor base is dry, I'm starting off with oil pastels. I'm working with my Holbein oil pastels. I have a 40 piece set that works and I'll be reviewing that soon. By soon, I mean probably next week. So um, check out that one if you are more curious about the Holbein oil pastels. I really like them. So in this oil pastel layer, what I'm doing is I'm just adding whatever color is there in the background I'm adding the similar color 
with oil pastels now so there is more of the same color and I don't have to be perfect I'm just adding more or less the same color now on the left hand side you'll see that in some areas I added blue and uh, yellow side by side and when they got mixed I got a ugly green there so you want to be very careful of what colors you're laying side by side so that you do not get any muddy mess or ugly colors that you do not intend to have so be a little bit careful while blending and while putting colors side by side you know that while blending they it, it, you need to know that while blending that those two colors will look nice when they put side by side now for blending i'm using a cotton rag what i typically do is i wrap that rag around my finger so that i can use the pressure from my finger and the my finger doesn't get dirty and the colors don't get mixed up because if once a one color pigment gets on my finger it is hard to get it off uh, uh, and then all the si same colors on all places do not look nice it sometimes makes a muddy mess so this rag around my finger really works nicely for me now onto the rock once again i'm doing the same thing like i did on the background but here you will notice that i'm using my um oil pastel strokes sideways like I'm using them at a, about a 45 degree angle because I want that look instead of an up and down look here um, because uh, for the shadows I kind of like the cross hatching kind of look so I'm using the same colors in the same areas once again I'm pulling in some whites also for some highlight areas and some very dark browns and a little bit of indigo blue and tiny bit of black for the deepest shadows I, for initially putting in the colors i'm being very sketchy just mapping out the colors in the right areas and then i'll come back again with the cotton rag around my finger and blend them all really nicely for them to all look cohesive there goes the blending once that is done the last thing will be that will be left is a figure which is again the most important thing so what I did for the body is I put the darker shadow colors first so there's a little bit of uh, brown and a little bit of purples for the very darkest shadows and for the mid-tones I used that flesh tint color that came in the set and for the highlights I'm using white straight up white and once i laid those colors down i'm again going to use my fingers wrapped with the cotton rag and blend them all together you want to be very careful about blending you want to go from lights to the dark so that the colors are in the right areas because this is a smaller area and blending smaller areas with oil pastels can be tricky i'm doing a little bit of uh, edging and all that sharpening the all the edges around the body and darkening and lightening and adding highlights on different parts of the body adding some really dark shadows around the different parts of the body and making it look really bright and pop out as you always know i always insist of make, making your darks really dark and your brights really bright so that the contrast is really sharp and you get a really nice um, sharp image the contrast is what makes your uh, ultimate painting pop now onto the hair i'm using brown blue and black mostly browns and blues very little back I'll use in the end and then I'm adding lots of grays in between for the lighter areas and highlights and then once again I'll use my rag and finger and blend all the colors together once all the colors are blended together I'm using the sharp edge of my pastel because the whole band pastel has as like a has is a rectangular shape so it has sharp edges i'm coming back with a scratching tool and scratching out some details around the hair i think this adds nice little textures that is that looked very nice in the final painting especially for the hair effect it just added to the flow of the hair and now on to the segments of the body of the scorpion tail I'm first putting in the shadows with very dark browns, a little bit of blues and some purples as well. 
and once I'm putting that down I'm coming back with two or three different shades of red that I have in my set it kind of is like a crimson one scarlet and one magenta I'm also pulling in some oranges to get the really sharp reddish look of the scorpion body adding a little bit of tiny ornamental details to the body I think that really made a huge difference in the painting and now I'm adding some highlights to the areas with a little bit of white and a lot of um, flesh tone color the white I'm using very sparingly because if you use it too much it just loses its effect on to the sting area I'm first laying down the darks which are purples and blues and browns then coming back with mid-tones of reds and then finally putting it a little bit of highlight with the white and flesh tone that's the same thing I'm going to do in each and every segment so the first two segments I'm so showing them slowly how I did it and then the last uh, three segments I'm just going to rush over it or rather the video has been much faster in this area so I hope you learned a trick or two about working with oil pastels and in smaller details and a thing or two about whole uh, whole vinyl pastels if you like this video obviously i would always ask you to give me a like that's the thumbs up that you need to hit and uh, if you are not already subscribed and you want to see more of such videos and videos in every other medium possible probably then you should hit the subscribe button as well and uh, do not forget to leave your comments whatever they are good bad or ugly what you feel about this painting or what you want me to paint or what other things i can help you with in your art journey i would be happy to assist you to the best of my abilities that's about it to the end of the painting i'm taking the tape off and i find this process very satisfying so i thought that today i'll share that with you and that's all about this scorpion woman I hope you will like her as much as I do. Thank you for watching.